Well, looks like it's Dan Crenshaw's turn to uh, face off against the Griper army that uh, General Nick Fuentes has uh, ordered uh, into battle against uh, Conservatism Inc. Uh, on uh, college campuses across the country. I've uh, never really followed Nick Fuentes. I've uh, you know seen his tweets since for many years since 2016, and you know I always just assumed he was you know one of these uh, um, actual alt right type guys. I don't mean that in a derogatory sense. I mean that in a uh, in a descriptive sense. And um, I have to say, uh, you know, thanks to all this controversy uh, and uh, you know the absolute temper tantrum that uh, Charlie Kirk and Rob Smith threw, uh, you know, this past week, I've like many other people actually given him a chance, you know, to hear him speak for the first time in my life. Uh, you know, I watched a couple of his shows, and I have to say. Um, you know he's he's much more optical uh, than I gave him credit for. Uh, he's uh, you know I, I'm not so sure that uh, you know maybe he's uh, as politically correct as he presents himself. Uh, but you know I have to say that uh, you know he he's not a demon. I'll put it that way. Uh, he seems to be a normal person. And uh, you know like myself and many others, uh, Nick uh, being a a member of the dissident right. Uh, you know, which is a, a group of people who have, you know, many varying different views. Uh, he has a big problem with, uh, you know, so-called conservatism incorporated, as I discussed in, uh, in my video about this on Friday. And, uh, you know, most of us, you know, on the right who have read books, which that's, you know, that's basically the qualification for being on the distant right. If you've actually read some, you know, philosophy or, um, you know, anything beyond a, uh, you know, a Fox News coffee table book, uh, you know, you probably are, are not a mainstream conservative. And I went over uh, the reasons for that, you know, why, you know, mainstream conservatism really is not an ideology, but just sort of an amalgamation of, uh, you know, special interests. And so, as you know, uh, one of those people, uh, you know, who doesn't like the mainstream, I'm very happy to see anyone uh, try and uh, punch up at them, uh, and uh, you know, and score some pot shots. And so now I've been follow. I'm trying to follow this as closely as I can, um, you know, just sort of for purely. Uh, you know, morbid curiosity, I guess you could say, uh, because I enjoy uh, watching uh, uh, the grifters squirm. And so Dan Crenshaw is, uh, I guess you could say, the latest victim, uh, although I don't think, I think he handled himself much better than Charlie Kirk did. I, in many ways, think that uh, Dan Crenshaw is a, a much more sinister character than Charlie Kirk. You know, Dan Crenshaw, uh, it's kind of eerie. He just sort of popped up as, as soon as John McCain died, and he's taken on the role really as, uh, you know, John McCain Jr., you could say, although I used to call Lindsey Graham John McCain Jr., but uh, th the label is more fitting to Dan Crenshaw. He's he's really the same person. He has the, uh, you know, he has, he's the war hero archetype, uh, and uh, his job is to go to Washington and say, uh, see – I fought in a war, and so therefore, uh, you know, you should support every uh, conflict that the uh, military-industrial complex dreams up, and, uh, you know, we should just keep fighting in the Middle East forever, and if you question me, well, then you hate the troops. And that's what John McCain did pretty much for his entire career. Um, you know, I don't think John McCain was uh, as preachy about it as he could have been, um, but Everyone else did for him. John McCain didn't have to come out and directly say, uh, "Well, I'm a veteran, so you have to listen to me." Uh, you know, everyone else said that for him. So John McCain always had that um, that extra advantage of, of, you know, hey, I I was in Vietnam and I was a POW, so therefore, if I support a war, uh, you know, that's just the, the good, you know, bipartisan, uh, apolitical thing to do. And since John McCain supported every war, that means that any good, uh, you know, red-blooded, free-thinking American who uh, who loves the flag should support every single war. And Dan Crenshaw, with his eye patch, uh, you know, has has taken on that role, uh, you know, and he, in many ways, will probably be more effective than John McCain because, uh, uh, well, one, he's a lot younger than John McCain has been for, you know, a long time. Uh, he has a long career ahead of him, and that that eye patch is just so uh, it's so visceral. It it's you know nobody can look him in the face and say you know uh, question his heroism or something like that. That because you know that would be heresy uh, when it comes to the American civic religion. Wounded warriors are are li are like our saints, or I guess you could say. Uh, like our like our martyrs, because uh, I guess in the American civic religion, I would say that uh, uh, recipients of the Medal of Honor are sa are saints. It's very similar um, in practice to canonization. 
And so Dan Crenshaw, as uh, you know, the new tool of the military-industrial complex, as the uh, the chief warmonger, um, I guess you could say the uh, uh, the 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 big guns uh, when it comes to to warmongering, because of course you can't challenge him. It's just like talking about you know racial issues with a black person. If you're a white person, you have to defer to uh, you know the black person uh, if they're talking about racial stuff because you know a, a whitey just a, he whitey can't comprehend those things. You know it's an emotional thing. It's about um, sort of your identity points. And uh, the the right likes to you know even the mainstream right makes fun of the left for having their their silly little curiarchy and their uh, their intersectional uh, point system. But the right has the same thing. Uh, you know if uh, um, if you're uh, non-Jewish, you can't uh, talk about Israel uh, to a Jewish person unless you're agreeing with them. You know, if you're not a veteran, uh, you can't uh, debate about wars with a veteran. Uh, you're only allowed to defer and agree with them, and so on and so on. And so let's get down now into the meat of the of the actual event uh, with Dan Crenshaw. First of all, it was hosted by YAF, uh, you know, Young Americans for Freedom, uh, or the Young Americans Foundation. I believe they use both names interchangeably. A group that I believe goes back to the Goldwater campaign. Uh, so a uh, you know a pretty uh, a pretty consistent uh, organization uh, that is uh, you know supposed to. Um, produce the next generation of, uh, you know, post-war conservative youths, you know, Buckleyite type people, uh, kids who, you know, probably, uh, you know, wear a suit and read the National Review. And so they had this uh, this event with Dan Crenshaw where he was supposed to come and, and talk about, you know, uh, triggering lip, libtards and stuff. And, uh, you know, the idea, as I've said before with these events, is that, uh, you know, you come up and you have some uh, you have some lefties ask, you know, what they think are tough questions but are actually softball questions because, you know, left-wing college kids are generally kind of dumb. Um, not all of them are, uh, but, uh, you know, the kind of people that they have at these events, you know, they ask dumb questions and then uh, like a straw man. And then, uh, you know, the speaker, in this case, Dan Crenshaw, is just supposed to come and smack him down and say, socialism sucks. And then the crowd cheers. And then, you know, some supporter will come up and say, like, oh, Dan, um, you know, how do you, uh, you know, make your eye patch look so sexy? And then he, you know, he goes on about, like, you know, oh, well, I just, you know, I, I, uh, I wax around, I wax my eyebrows every morning and, and I, um, I uh, oil the patch to make sure that the leather stays nice and supple. And, you know, it, it, that's generally the routine. It's, you know, straw man and softballs. That's, that's kind of how these events are supposed to go. And so uh, now that they know that the Groypers are coming uh, because of what happened to Charlie Kirk, uh, they made uh, they made they took care to to put more plants in the crowd uh, in uh, in this case and to make sure that the Groypers were not able to uh, uh, to oversaturate uh, the the questions. Because, uh, you know, the purpose of these is always, you know, they're, they're trying to control the opposition. It's just normally they don't have to try that hard. Now, because there's another, uh, you know, group of genuine um, opponents uh, coming in to ask questions of, uh, you know, Mr. Crenshaw and others, uh, they're having to work a little harder uh, to make sure the event goes their way, you know, because these things are all scripted. Uh, they they have their, their little stream going up, and like I said, they're farming for clicks. They want to have stuff that they can put out on Facebook and YouTube and uh, th little 30-second hits of, uh, of them, you know, beating down some leftist, and, you know, that helps them uh, spread their message and, and get donations and stuff like that. And so I think only three Groypers got to ask a question. Um, I've, I believe I've seen all three of them now, and um, I guess I'll go from uh, from best to worst. Uh, the best question I think was uh, was asking about foreign aid to Israel. Uh, you know, just sort of a, a general question of, hey Dan, uh, why are we doing this? Uh, do we really need to send Israel 38 billion dollars? They're a pretty rich country. Um, you know, the <laughs> 38 billion dollars is a lot of money. Uh, Israel is like the size of New Jersey, uh, which is a in case you didn't know, New Jersey is a very small state geographically. Um, Population-wise, it's huge. But you know, so he just wanted to know, hey, Kadan, why do we need to give Israel all this money? Can't they take care of themselves? You know, can't we give them a little less money? Uh, you know, couldn't that 38 billion dollars have gone to feeding the homeless in Los Angeles or something? And then Dan kind of lost his cool. Uh, this, this was not a good question for him. For some reason, all these people, it seems to be a common a common theme that you. You ask you ask them about Israel, they lose their shit. Uh, they don't know how to respond to anyone that asks about Israel. That is absolutely the third rail that you are not allowed to question. I have learned that uh, very much this week to the extent that I didn't know it already. Uh, 
you you want to you want to piss off a, a mainstream conservative ask them about Israel that's about the best thing you can do and so Dan got up and um, he you know nobody brought up Nick Fuentes or anything they just was asking a very reasonable question about Israel uh, you know for for all I know this kid could have been a leftist um, I didn't see the video you know maybe he was wearing a MAGA hat but you know this was a question that anyone could have asked about Israel uh, but Dan got up and said hey you sound like one of those knickers that I hear about on the on the Twitter uh, are you a fan of this Nick Fuentes kid? Did you know that Nick Fuentes is a Holocaust denier? And therefore, if you agree with Nick, uh, then obviously you're a Holocaust denier too. And he didn't he didn't say that last part, but that's what he was implying. He was implying, you know, hey, <laughs> you asked about foreign aid to Israel. What, do you think the Holocaust never happened? You know, which is a total non sequitur. <laughs> the Holocaust has nothing to do with foreign aid to Israel, unless he's implying that somehow uh, America has to pay back uh, you know, the Israelis uh, for the Holocaust or something like that, even though, you know, if you were to pay someone back for the Holocaust, it would be the families of people who died, not, you know, some stupid government in the Middle East, <laughs> you know, uh, unless maybe Dan thinks that uh, Israel represents all Jews. But, you know, frankly, if I would think saying something like that would be, you know, kind of racist. Of course, you know, the reason why I, I, I'm speaking so vaguely about this, about how Dan feels, is that uh, I really don't know what Conservatism Inc. thinks about Israel. Uh, I don't know what their actual, um, you know, philosophy behind all this is. I don't really understand it. And we never will because they don't want to talk about it. Uh, you ask them anything about it and they just flip out. And so that was probably the best question. That that one really made Dan uncomfortable, uh, even though, you know, hey, uh, he, he's supposed to be, uh, you know, Mr. Tough Guy Soldier, uh, you know, off, off in the Middle East fighting the Saracens. Uh, you know, he even lost his, uh, lost his right eye. I believe it's his right eye. And, uh, you know, so he's supposed to be uh, somebody who you would think can stand up to all these snowflakes and, and won't get triggered. But here he is getting triggered by a little griper. I mean, he's so tough he can take on, uh, you know, the Islamic hordes. Uh, in Iraq, but he can't take on one little scrawny griper. And so now on to the uh, you know the next two questions, which I didn't think were as good. The 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 second one, and I think I'm getting this order right, but I'm not entirely sure. This is the order I saw them, uh, you know, on Twitter. Uh, some guy asked about uh, you know the demographic stuff. He said, hey, you know, uh, whites are going to be a minority by 2045 or something, and uh, you know every other uh, ethnic group in America uh, votes uh, Democrats, you know. By a majority. So, what are you going to do when uh, the only group that votes Republican, you know, as a majority, um, is now in the minority? Which is a pretty fair question, uh, because I don't know what the Republicans plan to do. Now, I don't care since I'm, you know, I don't really want the Republicans to succeed anyway. And frankly, I don't even know if the United States will exist as a political entity uh, in 2045. I think we've got a lot of other uh, problems uh, that are that are going to hit long before, you know, demographic trends. However, I'd imagine if you did a poll of, uh, you know, conservatives of Inc., most of them think that the United States will exist in 2045, and so therefore they should be planning on, uh, you know, how they're going to, uh, you know, keep winning uh, if, uh, you know, the uh, the one group that they appeal to is is shrinking uh, as a percentage of the uh, of the uh, electorate. And you know, Dan uh, Crenshaw handled this question pretty well, I think, um, in that, you know, what he said uh, was not. Um, it was not a deflection, I don't think, entirely. I think that it, it was somewhat reasonable. However, um, it's a it was a very predictable answer. And if I were in the uh, position of uh, the Knickers, uh, if I were, you know, and I, again, immigration is not my thing, so uh, I don't, I wouldn't, if I had the chance, I'd ask, you know, Dan probably something about foreign policy, not about immigration. But if you want to ask these guys something about immigration, I would change the question um, because what um, they left an opening. Uh, for Crenshaw and all these other people to essentially come in and say, well, we're just going to campaign harder and, and try and win over the minorities. We don't care if, uh, you know, what your skin color is and blah, blah, blah. We're colorblind, all this Martin Luther King stuff, uh, which is fine um, in theory. Uh, however, what, you know, I think what the Knickers are getting at uh, with this question is that, uh, you know, the minorities are not voting Republican. And, you know, you've been saying for a long time that, hey, we just need to, you know, get the right message to them and they'll start voting Republican. And, and there was all this, you know, nonsense about Blexit, uh, which, you know, was total BS. Uh, and so this isn't working. So what's your guys' plan? That's That should be more the question that, hey, uh, we understand that, you know, um, ideally we'd like to be colorblind, um, but, you know, saying that hasn't attracted over any minorities to vote for you. Uh, there's no minorities that have uh, adopted 
you know, your political stances. Or I mean, there are some, but they're a minority. They're a minority of the minority, if that makes sense. Uh, you know, you don't have anywhere near 50% of uh, black people identifying as, uh, you know, conservative Republicans. And so, as a purely, you know, strategic thing, you need to worry about that and how you're going to, you know, try to keep winning elections. And so that's really, uh, you know, what. Uh, you know, you should focus your question on. Boil it down a little more for them uh, because, uh, yes, I, I would say the same thing if I were in his position. I would say, well, you just need to appeal to them. Uh, it doesn't matter what their skin color is because, I mean, I honestly feel that way. I don't want to, you know, judge people based purely on uh, their skin color and say that, oh, well, you're going to think a certain way because, you know, you were born uh, with a certain level of melanin in your skin. However, um, that is the reality we're dealing with uh, right now. People are – People tend to have the politics of, uh, you know, of their uh, – the p people they grew up around. You know, if you're born into a uh, Republican community, you're probably going to stay that way. And the same is true of, you know, if you vote Democrat, there's, uh, you know, a certain level of political inertia. I mean, it's tribalism, basically. We don't have, you know, it's not like people think that hard about politics in this country. That's not how democracy works. It's much more visceral than that. Um, you know, that's how – that's the reality of having universal franchise. Um, you get most people, you know, just sort of voting based on, uh, you know, who they identify with personally. And so it's not so easy to just win people over like that. You can win over a certain percentage of the population, but, uh, you know, you can uh, – you know, it's not like all the votes are up for grabs every election. Most people are already decided because, you know, they are who they are. And so obviously uh, the knickers uh, see the answer to this question as, hey, uh, we need to stop bringing in immigrants. And uh, you know, most of them would probably say, "Hey, uh, you know, uh, conservatives need to have a lot more children," which is why it, you know it seems like a lot of them are Catholic on uh, on Twitter. Um, so you know, and Catholics, of course, don't believe in birth control. I don't believe so. You know, they have lots of kids, and so that's their answer. They have an answer as to you know how you win in the future. Uh, you know, shut down immigration, repeal the – what is the 1965 Immigration Act, which is, by the way, not a fringe position. Uh, a lot of these younger people, the turning point type guys, and Charlie Kirk especially, are trying to make it out to sound like you know, repealing the 1965 Immigration Act is somehow a radical proposal. Um, first of all, it's not radical to say that you should get rid of something that's only been around since 1965. And two, growing up you know, when I was – Less developed, you know, politically. Uh, when I listen to more mainstream conservatives, uh, you know, people who I would consider to be a part of conservatism, Inc., repealing the 1965 Immigration Act was a very common slogan. Uh, that was something that was, you know, I wouldn't say it was universally focused on because not everyone was understood the immigration issue well enough to know about, you know, which laws had a, which effects on immigration. However, you know, I mean, very mainstream, like Mark Levin. Mark Levin was very passionate. I remember growing up listening to him. Uh, he wanted to get rid of the 1965 Immigration Act. He wanted to go back to the quota system of the 1920s. And Mark Levin is obviously not someone that you know people would call a racist. You know, he's uh, you know very Jewish and loves Israel and all that, so that means he's not racist. Um, even if you know he kind of seems racist against Arabs, that's that's okay. We're, that's socially acceptable. And I'm not I'm not mocking him. I'm being totally serious. That's just where we are at in this country. Uh, you know, you can say nasty things about Arabs and like you know like Ben Shapiro call them you know dogs and uh, say that they uh, they like um, you know defecating in the streets and stuff like that. And so these are people who are socially acceptable saying the exact same thing that you know Nick Fuentes and his people are saying. And so I don't see, you know, what where this uh, where this big um, uh, this need to suddenly call uh, people who believe this, you know, alt right or uh, racist or something like that. This, you know, I don't know. Did the conservative movement change recently? I mean, I thought that you know, the conservative movement overall, even mainstream, became, uh, you know, tougher on immigration as a result of Donald Trump's election. Because I mean, that was his big chief thing was like, hey, we haven't been strong enough on immigration. Um, so. Where is the controversy here uh, for you know these young you know Gen Z kids who are in college to come out and say, hey Dan, shouldn't we you know reduce immigration because you know we're importing Democrat voters? And so that's why I say you know from their perspective, I think this is a good issue to to hone in on. Uh, but you should reword your question in a way that's a little tougher to evade. Um, you shouldn't formulate a question that someone can just escape from by quoting Martin Luther King, uh, you know because. <laughs> Obviously, it's just a platitude at that point. It's uh, it's pie in the sky stuff. 
uh, you know, Republicans my entire life have been talking about like, oh, we just need to get our message out and uh, and appeal more to you know to minorities, and they haven't been able to do it for whatever reason. Um, I don't think that that's because of uh, you know inherent uh, biological you know differences and races of people or something like that. I think that's total nonsense. However, uh, you know, cultures have a way of perpetuating themselves, you know, generationally. So demographics do matter, and that doesn't make you a racist. You know, if you don't acknowledge that the United States is a multicultural society uh, akin to something like Austria-Hungary uh, in the uh, ni- you know late 19th century, uh, I think that you're just unrealistic. Sure, we all generally speak the same language. Uh, we speak some dialect of English uh, for the most part. Of course, there's, a lot of, there's people who still speak French and Spanish in this country. But other than the language thing, we're really not very united culturally. Uh, the, you know, America's a big mishmash, and you're not going to have one message that appeals to, to every group. Uh, it's just not feasible. You can't bring all these disparate groups together. You know, it's not uh, you know, racist to say that there is a, um, uh, a black culture in America or a uh, – I wouldn't say that there's such a thing as a Hispanic culture because Hispanic is kind of a term invented by the U.S. government. Um, but you know, or even a white culture. I think that <laughs> white people are very are very diverse in the United States too. Uh, but th- nevertheless, there are many different cultures in the United States. Some of whom are going to be more open to conservative ideas, and some of uh, whom are going to be more resistant. Okay, and so the last question I thought was you know just a waste of time and didn't really matter. I mean, I guess. Uh, Nick's guys, this is something that really bothers them, um, which I mean, I guess you know, I'm not, I'm not a, a big Christian guy, so I maybe I, I don't, I can't relate. But uh, they asked about you know Ben Shapiro and and, uh, and Jesus, and apparently Ben Shapiro said nasty things about Jesus, uh, which you know I wouldn't find that shocking. Uh, ben Shapiro is not a Christian; that's not a secret. Um, you know, they asked Dan Cranshaw, like, oh, you know, Ben Shapiro, I can't remember what he said about it. I think he said that uh, they were quoting Shapiro as saying that Jesus had been wrongfully crucified, uh, or rightfully crucified. And frankly, uh, you know, if that's true, uh, I don't really care because that doesn't affect me one way or the other. Uh, you know, what I care about someone is more their public policy positions, not so much how they get to them, uh, because how they get to their positions, uh, that's something that matters to me if I if I knew them personally. Uh, you know, if I, you know, had if I knew someone in my life that I thought believed really nasty things, um, I might not want to associate with them. Uh, however, when it comes to politics and trying to, you know, get things uh, uh, through Congress or something like that, you're going to have to ally with you know, people who you might disagree with on other things um, to uh, get done uh, the things that you do agree with them on. And so there's lots of things that I think are wrong <laughs> with uh, Ben Shapiro, obviously. Um, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the guy. However, I don't really think that this is that productive of a question for this kind of a setting. I feel like the, the question was like, oh, hey, Dan Crenshaw, uh, turns out Ben Shapiro is not really a Christian. What do you think about that? And of course, Dan Crenshaw didn't respond. He's just like, you know, I don't care. Don't don't come up here saying nasty things about Ben Shapiro. Uh, you know, he didn't deny, you know, what the guy said or or anything like that. I don't know if it's true. Um, I I'm not uh, real familiar with uh, uh, Ben Shapiro's um, attitude towards Jesus Christ, other than that he doesn't think that he was the Messiah. Um, and I've only implied that, you know, based on his uh, his Orthodox Jewish faith. But anyway, those were the only three gripers that got through, which, uh, you know, I'm a little disappointed. I was hoping that we would get in some some more questions like that one about Israel to Dan Crenshaw because uh, uh, Dan Crenshaw to me is a uh, – he's he's one of the uh, uh, the uh, the paper tigers that I would like to see shredded uh, the most. But anyway, I'm going to I'm going to keep following this. I don't know how many more videos I'll do on this, um, but uh, I thought I thought that it was worth talking about uh, old Danny, old Danny boy today. Um, I I guess Nick is going to keep this up. and I'm very happy to hear that. I'm very glad to hear that somebody's finally, uh, 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 you know, taking it to uh, to conservatism, Inc. and going to their stupid little events and uh, actually humoring them and, uh, you know, trying to. In a, in a not nasty way, uh, expose them for being, uh, you know, the uh, unintelligent grifters that they are. So if you gained anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and sharing this video. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe because I do upload every day and I'd hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.